drug abuse in Seattle is leading directly to a rise in violent crime. Journalist Jonathan Cho was filming in Seattle on Monday. That's when a homeless man decided to attack him. Would you call me? I told you a ticket. You hide your world. Come on. Here. 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 Come on. Come on. Here. Go. Give me that phone, you. Oh, you are going to die. You know, children in Seattle are exposed to that every single day. You know, in February, Jonathan Cho filmed this scene near a local high school. Three bucks piece. Ten dollars. Everybody's buying. At the corner of 12th and Jackson, there's a thriving black market of stolen goods being sold for pennies on the dollar. A Fifteen dollar piece of crack. On the other side, addicts use and trade hardcore drugs in plain sight. And just down the block on King Street, multiple infernos have raged out of control at this massive homeless encampment right underneath a state highway. And look at this man with a needle in his arm, setting up for his next fix, doing it right in front of students as they head home from school. Summit Sierra High School is caught in the middle of this unwanted action. Along with math and science, the students at this charter school are also learning how to avoid fentanyl fumes. Guys doing drugs right there. You guys have to see this every day. It's outrageous. Jonathan Cho joins us now. He's a senior fellow at the Discovery Institute. Jonathan, you're doing important work. But who's helping to solve this problem? Who is being who is alarmed by what you're showing? Well, look. I hope that the lawmakers, the policymakers in Seattle and Washington state are watching this video because this is part of the raw realities on the streets every single day in this city. Look, the video don't lie and I'm doing it to hold our officials accountable. I'm doing it to hold uh, the officials who put out bad public policy accountable. But I'm the only one out here right now. Look, that uh, first video that you showed with the guy chasing me with a knife that happened on Monday at the corner of 3rd Avenue and Cherry, that's part of the downtown core, a block away from Seattle City Hall. The mayor has a bird's eye view of this street. Now, look, to his credit, he is constantly sweeping these tents that form on the street. And in many cases, these are the so-called trap tents. It's not a homeless problem out here. You have people using these tents to essentially sell drugs and to traffic people. So the mayor is on this. But what's forming out here are these types of individuals, these criminals. It's attracting these folks who are committing bad behavior and crimes, quite frankly. And I'm just spotlighting this. And that's why that guy chased me, because he didn't want to be called out and exposed. If he wasn't uh, clumsy enough or drunk enough or high enough uh, to trip over a, a, a flat road, you could have been in trouble. I mean, obviously, he's fearless, yeah. and he looked at you as a threat because you had a camera uh, reporting on his lifestyle. Jonathan, how long has it been this bad, and do you sense it's going to get worse? You know, Brian, unfortunately, uh, I think it's going to get worse before it gets any better. The mayor just announced his downtown activation plan last week. It's still a hot mess out here. Nothing has changed. I'm here almost every single day. You have people doing fentanyl just a block away from Pike Place Market, the tourist, you know, core right now where you have children and families walking by just stunned at what's going on. There's got to be enforcement. Jason Rance talked about this already. We don't have enough police officers and there's got to be intervention for actual treatment. It's got to be required and forced. Otherwise, there's going to be no end in sight. Right. It's just amazing. We keep electing or they keep electing or your your colleagues there keep electing the same politicians that have a great tolerance for this. They think it's the right thing to do, which blows my mind. Well, look, the old uh, policies are failing. So if they're going to use the old playbook to address this ongoing crisis, that's not going to work. We need some new ideas and we need actual enforcement and intervention to deal with this ongoing humanitarian crisis. Jonathan, you put your life on the line to save a city. I appreciate it. Thanks for sharing your story and your video. Thanks, Brian. Take care.